three, it is June fourteenth. This is our uh, June meeting of the SBU ESD. The first agenda item is to move into executive session, and I would entertain uh, the following motion. Uh, I would move um, that we go into executive session on Monday, uh, and move that the premature general public knowledge regarding pending or probable civil litigation to which the board may be a party to and the discussion of confidential attorney-client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the board would place the board at a substantive disadvantage. That's the first part of the motion that I would entertain. Here's the second part. Uh, I would entertain a motion that we enter into executive session under 1 BSA section 313A1E and 313A1F to discuss pending or probable civil litigation and to discuss confidential attorney-client communication and that the superintendent and legal counsel and anyone else identified by either the superintendent or our legal counsel to join that session. So I would entertain a motion to that effect. Anyone wish to make that motion? So move. Thank you, Dick. Can I have a second on that, please? Thank you, Tammy. Any discussion on the motion that's on the floor? Hearing none, all those in favor of the two-part motion that's on the floor, please signify by saying aye and raising your hand, please. Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. So uh, the superintendent has set up a breakout room, uh, and he should have a, a box prompting you to join that, so please do so, and that will... ...of executive session. So that brings us to the next agenda, on uh, the next item on our agenda, uh, which is the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everyone would please rise and... Um... It was raining. <laughs> I didn't get the flag. <laughs> it's outside, so, so we'll uh, just have to say it without the flag. Yep. Unless someone else has got one somewhere. And I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America. and America. to the republic for which it stands, yes. one, nation, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank, Thank you, Scott. You. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> the official Bennington flag. So moving on to p agenda item three, public comments. And um, Jim, I know that in the past there have sometimes been some issues in making sure that folks are able to access public comments. So are you able to see if there are any other participants to this meeting um, who should have the opportunity to offer public comments? I'm looking at the participant list and I see, uh, all I see are members of either the board or other employees. Um, so if there's no one else, I think we can move to the next agenda item, uh, which is a proposed position uh, for a school social worker based out of Shaftesbury. Um, so uh, Superintendent Culkeen or Assistant Superintendent Boudreau, I'm not sure which of the two of you would be best to speak with us, um, but I will. The, the floor is yours. Laura, do you want to or admit, Nick, what the request came from the uh, principal? Or Renee, I don't know. Yeah, oh, Renee's here too. I see. Okay. I think yeah. Nick Nick had the paperwork, but we I unless yeah, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Social worker in Shaftesbury. Nick. Yes. Um, so the proposal is to move the existing school community liaison to a social worker position based on the fact that the incumbent has obtained um, their school social worker endorsement through the AOE. Um, <laughs> The roles have some overlap, so it seemed a natural um, it seemed a natural uh, proposal to move her into that role. Um, the cost is not sufficiently more, and she'll be able to offer a broader range of services to uh, to the students at Chesapeake. Okay, so apart from a simple, is there a specific language that is needed uh, from a, a personnel standpoint, or can we simply? Uh, I believe that it's on the consent agenda. Is it on the consent agenda or is it on a separate item on the agenda? It's a separate item on the agenda, but let me see if it is um, if it is included in the nomination. Although I don't know. I don't see that it is. No. So I guess a motion to, uh, Renee, you might be better suited. A motion to restructure. What do you want to say about the position? Yeah, no, I think we just need approval from the board to reclassify the reclassify. position. Nice. From the liaison to a social worker. Thank you, Director Gordon. So I would entertain that motion to reclassify this specific 
position from the liaison to the school social worker. I move. Thank you, Dick. Uh, could I have a second on that motion, please? <laughs> Thank you, Scott. We won't count uh, Nick's child's voice as the second. Uh, that child is not a member of this board. I'm sorry. Uh, but so we have the first and the second. Any discussion in terms of reclassifying this position? Very good. Hearing none. All those in favor of reclassifying the position as described, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the motion carries. Very good. Next is the approval of the consent agenda. Uh, the consent agenda is has been posted, but it, it, it is, consists of the minutes from the May 11th board meeting. Um, the warrants uh, had already been signed and executed after last week's scheduled meeting. Um, there are no leaves of absence. Uh, there's the retirement of the PE teacher at Molly, uh, Ms. Plummer. We have two resignations, uh, Ms. Nanda and Ms. Saunders. And we have four nominations, uh, a teacher at Molly Stark, a teacher at Shaftesbury, another teacher at Shaftesbury, and the assistant principal at Powell Elementary and Shaftesbury Elementary. So any, uh, well, I suppose I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as published, please. Move to approve consent Thank agenda. You, Dick, with the second from Jeff. Any discussion on any elements of the consent agenda? Just a question. Um, yes. Do we have the Sarah Case? Did we have to do a resignation for Sarah Case as she's given up her teaching job? And I believe there was one the teacher who was hired for Shaftesbury for Miss um, McKenna's position that was opened. So I think there's a looming. Position. The resignation for Sarah wouldn't be necessary because she's coming already from within the SBUESD. Um, so pro so likely not. Um, another teacher hired to cover fifth grade. Um, on this on this consent agenda or just in general for nominations so well, what's the question does anyone else need to resign no no do we have another position open that has been hired because we had a third grade a fourth grade and a fifth grade position I think all were interviewed is my understanding yes and I believe I have to go back to my notes um but yes, I think I think we are either already posted or Jeff has already um, done the work necessary. So I don't have an update on the top of my head. Off the top of my head, but I okay. think I think everything is all set. He's potentially hired. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm no, sorry. No, this, no, there are complications with this. It's not on the agenda because of um, it was it was a from a school district within the state of Vermont, and the superintendent there needed their board needed to release the teacher. Um, in order to be hired here, that has occurred, but not in time for us to get it on this agenda. Okay, so can we amend the agenda to add that to the agenda, the name? You could, but we should have amended that right at the beginning of the meeting. It hasn't been posted yeah. as part of the agenda. Yeah. So we would have had to amend the agenda right as we started. So um, we are we are going to have to meet again this month. Uh, for okay. contracts, so maybe we can we can do it then. Um, is there any risk to losing this teacher uh, to some other position if we are unable to take action on this right this moment? I don't think so. I think that they'll understand the process. And if it was going to be, you know, August before we met, they might pan panic. But we will meet uh, uh, probably before the SU meeting because we have okay. to ratify the teachers and support staff contracts. So, so we could, we, Nick can relay the message to them or Jeff can relay the message to the person we're gonna hire that, you know, it, it wasn't done. And they, they know why it wasn't on the agenda. Yeah. You understand that, but there is a Vermont statute that I can't hire somebody who's under contract to another school district in the state of Vermont unless that superintendent releases that person from their contract, so. That's what we're waiting for. Once, once that person's released from their contract, they can be rehired by us. They can, we can hire them, yeah. Perfect. And I'm, I'm technically supposed to uh, inform the superintendent before I offer the position um, to the person. And um, I, I tell you, you know, we, it doesn't always happen. Like we have some people resignations here today that are left to go to work at other school districts. And I, I'm, I, I don't hold people to that contract as long as we can find a replacement because it 
you know, the timeline, you know, they get their contract March 15th, and it just seems uh, an impossible situation. And, uh, and, and we have no request we lose anybody to Massachusetts or New York or New Hampshire. So it's, uh, but it's, it's there, and we have to deal with it. Jeff, does that take care of your, your questions and concerns? That's take care of my questions, yep. Very good. So we have a motion on the floor, which is to approve the consent agenda as published. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda as published, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, next, it brings us down into finance. So I will turn to Director Gordon to take us through that, please. I think your first item is the treasurer's report. So I think you normally <laughs> take we, action. We do, yeah. So we yeah. Um, move to accept. So has that been posted at this point? I, I I did not see it prior to our meeting schedule last week, and, and frankly, I didn't look again. Do we know if it has actually been posted yet? I'm looking right now. Okay, thank you. I did not see it, but... That doesn't mean anything. Uh, the May Treasurer's Report is posted. Okay, yes. great. So I would uh, entertain a motion to accept the Treasurer's Report as posted, please. So moved. Thank you, Dick. Could I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Scott. Any discussion on approving the Treasurer's Report? All right. Uh, hearing none, all those in favor of approving, please signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, very good. So that passes. <laughs> Um, could you give us an update on the cleaning contract, please, Director Gordon? Yes. Um, so what we're asking the board is if um, they would authorize us to extend the existing contract for another year with Janatronics. Uh, Janatronics um, services the three Bennington Elementary Schools, and in working um, with their leadership at Janatronics, they agreed to increase their um, their rate for next year within what's allowable um, through the, um, I'm sorry, through statute, through the NEEP index, which was uh, determined to be 2.6%. Um, that comes out every fall from the agency. Uh, and then if contractors are willing and then the board approves, we can go ahead and extend that contract um, for an additional year. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any questions of Director Gordon around that? All right, so I would therefore entertain a motion to renew the contract within the confines that Director Gordon just outlined. So moved. Thank you, Dick. Could I have a second for that, please? Second. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. Any uh, further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of renewing the cleaning contract as described, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that carries. Um, next, on uh, under finance, Looks like the panel elementary school has been awarded a thousand million dollars at the end of the war. Um, and so we need to. We're having trouble hearing you. Oh, does anyone have. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion to accept this award from Williams College? No move to accept the award. Not hearing me. Good thanks, Jeff. Any <laughs> any discussion about uh, the the Williams College award? Hearing none. All those in favor of accepting the Olmsted Award from Williams College for Palo Elementary School, please aye. signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And the motion carries. And Director Gordon, we'll turn it back to you for a description of the panel paving project, please. Uh, there is a, a section at uh, Pownell Elementary School that has um, typically been dirt and has been um, somewhat of a problematic maintenance issue. So um, we did budget for this um, in, in the upcoming budget. So um, it's work that we had gotten an estimate for last year. And we did uh, contact, as you can see in the, in the summary that we provided, multiple contractors. We had only one actually come back with a bid to do the work this summer. Um, that's Mintroni Paving, also out of panel um, for $19,475. Um, 
and we're just asking the board to um, authorize we go ahead and award that contract to them and we also are in the process of seeking a bid waiver from the agency because we didn't have um, at least two people or maybe I think statute required maybe three um, prices to come in so we'll get that uh, bid waiver from them as well okay excellent so I would entertain a motion to award the panel paving project to Mintrone paving as described I'll move Thank you, Dick. Can I have a second for that, please? Thank you, Jeff. Any further discussion on the panel paving project? Hearing none, all those in favor of awarding the panel paving project uh, contract to Mitrone Paving as described, please signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And that motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, very briefly, we have two policies to consider tonight. Uh, first, I would entertain a motion to warn uh, policy 4035, the conflict of interest in hiring. So moved. Thank you, Dick. Could I have a second for that, please? Second. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, any discussion about warning that policy? Hearing none, all those in favor of warning the policy, please signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that motion carries. And finally, we have a motion to adopt policy 5030, which pertains to attendance, which we've discussed uh, in the past. Uh, anyone choose to make that motion to adopt policy 5030? Move to adopt. Thank you, Dick. Any seconds? Thank you, Jeff. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting policy 5030, please signify by saying aye and raising your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Uh, Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you very much. That brings us to the superintendent's report. So, Superintendent Culkeen, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. Um, you may have heard that school has ended. Uh, last day, uh, a week ago today was the last day for our students. Um, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I was surprised by how well attendance was. I know it was up over 70% which um, surprised me considering coming back from Monday uh, for the last day and how hot it was in our school buildings on Monday. So I was thankful for that. Um, and then our last day for staff was Friday the 11th. Those four days, Assistant Superintendent Laura Boudreau and I used to uh, tour all our schools and that includes uh, Division Street and On Point. Um, and then we had a restorative circle at each at each building where um, assistant superintendent had uh, three prompts for discussion so that we uh, could have a discussion with with the group and get feedback on what their experiences were uh, during the past school year I have to say uh, it was it was exciting to be physically in a school building again it's not something that and, and I know that Laura is shaking her head there that it was just I think people were happy to see us and or maybe I'm projecting but they we certainly were happy to see them um, it, it was a wonderful experience to to get their feedback you know you're a little nervous when you're asking for people to to give you feedback about how their year was what you may hear uh, it was a very respectful process um, and it was a cross-section of staff who was in it, everything from you know support staff, office staff, teachers, uh, administrators, and we've got feedback from them. So one of the questions that each group asked was, well, what are you gonna do with what you're hearing here? Well, tomorrow uh, I meet with the central, the SVSU uh, administrators. We're doing a little administrative summit and uh, we, we're we gonna, uh, com we've compiled the feedback we've heard, and we're going to share that with them as uh, as, as we start our strategic planning for you know what's next. What did we learn from from this? What's good about what took place, and that we may want to keep. And uh, you know, what is what is what did they want to let go? So I'm looking forward to that uh, tomorrow to have um, that kind of reflective time uh, and to debrief and hear what everyone's experiences work and that actually that also will be in person uh, not not by zoom so and uh, i imagine we'll give a report back to the board at some time we promised people that we wouldn't 
mention them by name and say like you know Jim Caldean said this you know it, it's it, it's more it's more reflective and restorative in that way that we you know, we want to respect um, their views but also their privacy too um, so I, you heard me mention and we didn't weren't able to amend the agenda um, and as is a matter of practice, I try to amend the, not amend agendas at the meeting because the public has a right to know what, what's going to be on there, but unless it's an emergency. And if, if, if I didn't think we were going to have another meeting until August, I definitely would have asked you, even though we didn't do it. I think having the executive session right in the front of the meeting kind of threw off our pace. Um, so teachers have ratified their contract. Thank you. Uh, support staff. Um, they, we will, let's say, back up. We negotiated a settlement with the teachers or mediated a settlement. We received word that they have ratified that contract, so the next step will bring it to the board. I have not heard if uh, supports that. We did settle last Wednesday, uh, a very lengthy session with support staff, reached a settlement with them. I uh, will wait for them to ratify it. And then the next step will be that we'll those of you who have been there before, some people call it a carousel meeting, some call it you know a joint meeting of all boards, so that uh, the negotiating team only has to explain the settlement once, and then you'll you'll we warn all the individual meetings all at the same time. You do your own deliberation, then you come back and tell us how you voted on it, and uh, hopefully we can get this passed. So I would like to do that. Uh, the SU meeting is the 23rd, so maybe prior to the 20. Prior to the SU meeting on the 23rd, uh, have that carousel meeting so uh, we can uh, put that in. And I, I'm thrilled that that is behind us and that it is a three year contract, which gives us a, a two year pause before we start negotiating again. Because we have been negotiating, because of the changes in health insurance, we've been negotiating a series of one year contracts. And it just seems like we're constantly at the bargaining table. So uh, happy, that, happy that that's done. Um, this is your last full remote school board meeting. As you heard, the um, may, may have heard, the governor has released his emergency orders. So um, we had the scramble today and rewarn Wednesday's MAU meeting. It had to have a physical location. So, but we're we realize that not everybody wants to physically come to a meeting. So one of the things we did during the pandemic is uh, we had contractors in to um, add technology to the conference room at central office. So the, there's a large monitor on the wall, but there's a better sound system. There's a remote camera that can follow the sound uh, and good microphones and good speakers. So Vermont statute, what we got all reminded about again today, allows for people um, to attend remotely. In fact, they encourage it. I mean, the distances that some people have to travel to go to public meetings in Vermont is great. So we had to warn a physical location and at least one person, one designated person has to be present. It doesn't have to be a board member, but it can be. So for Wednesday night, it'll be our first hybrid board meeting. I'll be the designated person uh, sitting in the conference room at central office and I'll, I'll open up a Zoom meeting from there and people can either physically come in to the to space or join us um, by Zoom. So we'll see how that works. I, I keep telling everybody the conference room is it's kind of a test project for us. It's a smaller location. Um, I, I'd love to get to the point that we uh, do a couple of our school buildings with the same setup so that uh, uh, um, like the MAU and SVSU use the library at the middle school. Is that a possibility to do that? And what does that look like? And for the Union Elementary Board, if we want that option, we may have to designate a school that is the most accessible building that we have and use that and not necessarily do the rotation. Or who knows, by August, maybe we're comfortable enough that you know we're all in place. You always could call into a meeting, you could always be remotely, but those of you who have been on some, some board meetings with us before where somebody calls into the meeting that can be difficult to, to hear. So we've been practicing some of our meetings, the administrators in the conference room, so that we're comfortable with, um, you know, 
the hybrid the hybrid board meeting. I, I think it'll I think it'll work pretty good. So yes, Todd. I mean Scott. Oh, God. Don't worry. Um, I think the limiting factor for for me as we think about this transition back is um, we start a meeting at five. Well, that's per that's perfect because my work day goes till five. Um, but if but we got to travel to get there, if I have to travel to get somewhere, that's that that would be problematic. So are we, you know, and I and I realize this is a question that won't be answered now, but it is something to think about is the the travel time for for folks who who may be coming from further away or have to work till five, um, yep. and what that part looks like. So the board can decide to change their time again. We just have to make sure that we want it and like. You know, when you reorganize a match and we usually vote on what the meeting schedule is for the for the year, we had to, if you remember, we had to modify when we did the five because we used to, when we did it back in March, it was a different meeting time. So as long as we make a, a public announcement of what the time is going to be, the board can decide to change that time back. Yeah. Just don't make it seven o'clock. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's, that's pretty much where we are where we um, summer programming I think is set to go um, some recovery I don't know if Laura do you want to give them a quick little update on where we are for that or Melissa you got both the all-stars here don't <laughs> yeah no I think um, again we're doing a very small start this year and growing over time um, um, Renee and Melissa and I meet weekly with our coordinators. Um, we have one for um, early ed and the elementary level and the middle and now the high. Um, and we're just navigating, um, uh, we're knee deep in transportation. Like, um, as I mentioned earlier uh, this spring, um, this is the first time we've been able to offer transportation. So we're now we're figuring out how do you do transportation in the summer? Um, next is uh, meals and making sure kids are fed and there's professional learning to support um, uh, the reading and the math and the social emotional interventions and again we're starting really small this year and growing and then um, and Melissa I'd let you chime in we I, I think I'm thinking we've really tapped into our community and also tried to share with families all the other wonderful things that are available do you want to add anything Melissa I just wanted to um, shout out to Kayla Becker from the YMCA and other community members who have stepped up to say we're all going to start small with the money that we for recovery, we're all going to work together because we are stronger and better and serving more kids together. So we're hoping that this can get even bigger next year as we go into next summer. Exciting. Well, you know, again, I can't thank you and your team enough for, you know, putting that together. We are, um, you know, shifting uh, mask policies. Uh, if you're vaccinated, um, you won't need to wear a mask. Uh, we're following kind of the state guideline on that as we go to summer program. Uh, but in our elementary programs, most of the students are not vaccinated, so they will be wearing masks while in the building. So to we'll encourage programs to go outside as much where as possible, so they don't need to you know wear masks. But we're we'll be issuing that guidance um, shortly. Any questions I can answer for the board? No. Thank you, and um, it's been quite a year, and uh, I appreciate the board's support as we uh, navigated through the unknown and what we uh, never really prepared for before or expected that it would go on as long as it has. But I'm hoping that um, uh, September, well, August will be as normal as possible. One thing, one thing I should mention: um, the state is telling us no remotes, no days next year. Which the superintendent association is not too happy with. It's like we've, we've geared up with all this technology. We're, we're, you know, I think we 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 know what we're doing. Yes, do we miss some people on remote days? Are there some people that don't work out as that well? But how productive is education if we were in school this past week with 90 degree temperatures? Adding days on late in June isn't very productive either. I don't know if that's going to be final ruling from AOE, but right now they're saying uh, we cannot do uh, remote learning days uh, in place of snow days for next school year, which 
is a disappointment. And I, I, I think a compromise should be that we'll allow up to so many days, you know, put a number on it, you know, five days, four days, uh, that we can, and, and then look what type of data we gather, make us file reports on what attends, what contact time was like, and, and then make, you know, find a decision and, and see how that works. But um, anyways, that's my, that's my report. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you, Jim and Laura and Melissa. Thank you for that. So just the two final items on the agenda, um, the chair's report, and I just wanted to end this meeting. I should also add we're not meeting in July. We typically don't, um, so that won't be happening. Um, we just wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone for all of the work that they put into this this, this past year. Um, so all the, the staff at Central Office, and first of all, last year when the last academic year had to be ended in the midst of, of the pandemic as it, was, as it was emerging, everyone responded with such quickness and such efficiency, and, and we were able to capture so many of our learners despite the shift in how education was being delivered. And then that success was just built upon uh, this over the course of this academic year. Um, so certainly thanks to everyone at the central office level for their flexibility and their dedication. Uh, when it gets, comes to the staff, uh, in the buildings themselves, administrative staff, teaching staff, support staff, um, again, just the, I've used the term poise to describe how well that they did that work, and, and that, that continues to be an accurate descriptor, just with, with calmness and with being collected and being organized and moving forward and being creative in how they were going to deliver that, that education with the ability to reach even more learners than they were at the end of the last academic year. I was just astounding. And, and to all the parents who were at home and trying to be creative in how they were going to manage their resources to support their students throughout that. And to the kids, and I hope there are no kids watching this right now. I hope they're doing something else. But if they are kids, you did a great job. You did a really great job. And and the experiences that, that you had this year and what they missed, you know, what they would have experienced in a typical academic year that they didn't have this year, I hope will just be all the more sweet for them next year uh, when things are, are closer to normal. So just thank you to everyone uh, who made this work because this was not at all easy to make work. So thanks to everyone. And then, sure, Scott, go ahead. Just to build on that, and it's, it's more of a question, is, is it appropriate, uh, does the board feel it's appropriate, just in case there are people who aren't watching this or, or don't get the message, that um, our, our understanding and acknowledgement of the work from with every level within, within um, the elementary school district be heard? Can we, can we draft a letter? Can we draft an email that could be sent out as a mass correspondence that just says, hey, thank you, enjoy your summer, you've earned it. Um, it just as, an, as a public, as an acknowledgement to that group of, of mm -hmm. our understanding of the extra efforts that went into making this year possible. I think that's entirely appropriate, Scott. And uh, I know you're, you've already taken on a few things to write. Uh, if you want to write that, fine. If not, I'd be happy to write that myself. And we can we can get that out under the under the board's auspices. How about I'll take the other one and you take that one. <laughs> I'll will take the fun one and you can take the other one. Okay, deal. Uh, all right, so that's that. Uh, and then just the final agenda item is just the FYI with the budget status report and the student enrollment data, um, which has been posted on the website. So that having exhausted our agenda, I would entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. I move. Thank you, Dick. Second. I think I see Scott with his hand up for the second. Uh, any discussion about uh, about adjourning this meeting? Okay, and again, just the note, we will not be meeting in July. However, we do need to have a carousel meeting that will be warned at some point prior to the end of this month. So uh, with that, all those in favor of adjourning this meeting, please signify by raising your hand and saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes. So thank you all very much. Have a nice night.